Good afternoon. My name is David Greenfield. I'm the council member from the 44th Council District in Brooklyn. I'm privileged to serve as the chair of the Land Use Committee. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues and members of the committee and joining me today, Council Member Korodnik, Council Member Mealy, Council Member Mendez, Council Member Rodriguez, Council Member Williams for his early attendance. That is indeed a surprise. Council Member Richards, Council Member Barron, Council Member Cohen, Council Member Kalos, Council Member Reynoso, Council Member Torres, Council Member Traeger, and Chair Salamanca. Shh. Folks, if we can just uh, whisper on the set, it would make our lives easier. Thank you very much. I want to thank Chair Salamanca, Chair Richards, and Chair Ku for their outstanding work on our land use subcommittees, and Council Member Mendez for filling in so ably today for Council Member Ku this morning. Today we'll be voting to approve, with modifications, the Greater East Midtown rezoning. We'll also be voting to approve two of the sidewalk cafes on our calendars. All other items on our calendar will be laid over. The Greater East Midtown Business District is one of the largest job centers in the region. It contains more than 60 million square feet of office space and more than 250,000 people work there every single day. The goals of the rezoning are to ensure that the area around the major transit hub of Grand Central Terminal will remain one of the region's premier office districts by incentivizing the development of modern, sustainable, super class A office space, preserving landmark buildings and upgrading the area's transit network and pedestrian realm. The actions before us are a text amendment to establish an East Midtown subdistrict within the special Midtown district and a zoning map amendment to rezone a portion of a block bounded by 2nd Avenue, 3rd Avenue, East 42nd Street and East 43rd Street from C5-2 to C5-3. While the council agrees with these goals of the rezoning, in its view, modifications are necessary. In fact, if you look at the modifications that are before you today that I'm about to describe, these were all part of a long collaborative process led by Councilmember Dan Gorodnik in collaboration with the Borough President Gail Brewer. This is reflective of how a zoning should work, which is that the administration proposes a zoning and the council then tweaks it to ensure that the needs of the local community is met. In this case, Councilmember Gorodnik had an unenviable task. He not only had to keep his constituents happy, he had to keep a quarter of a million of the rest of our constituents happy who travel into Midtown each and every single day to work and to worry about their concerns as well. And I think he's done a fantastic job. So let's talk about some of those outstanding issues and how we resolve them. With respect to the minimum contribution amount, based upon feedback and a revision of the study methodology, which was revised to exclude transactions in part of the city with our tax incentives for development, and to focus on development right transaction instead of land sales, the council is reducing the development right valuation from $393 per square foot to $307.45 per square foot. Thus, the minimum per square foot contribution amount would be the greater of 20% of the sale price, or $61.49 per square foot. I know that not everybody is happy about this, but this is what we call a fair compromise. When everybody around the table is not thrilled, that means we probably got it right. And this is a way of addressing the concerns by all the parties to ensure that when there is a transfer of air rights, that the public captures a fair amount of that to go into the public realm. To address concerns raised about complex transactions, the Council has included a new defined term, sale price, which makes clear that all consideration must be reported, even if it is contingent consideration, so that we will capture the full value. With respect to the governing group, the Council is modifying the text to include a representative appointed by the Speaker. Of course, this is the group that will govern over the funds that will be generated through the minimum contribution amount. And this particular organization will establish that the civic organization representative is an appointment of the Manhattan Borough President and ensure transparency and reporting by the governing group. The modification also requires that if $20 million have been contributed but are languishing unspent after three years, the governing group must vote either to fund a public realm improvement or vote to retain those funds. This will ensure that the money doesn't get stuck in the system or potentially hoarded for some other purpose and was another issue that we addressed at our hearing a few weeks ago. The Council also modified the definition of quality site to ensure that developments are located with at least 75 feet of frontage along a wide street unless a landmark or transit easement is located there. In keeping with the East Midtown Steering Committee's goals, the Council ensure that high-quality indoor-outdoor 
public spaces will be provided for qualifying sites with over 30,000 square feet of lot area. We expect that now half of the developments that go up will, re will include brand new privately owned public space, which is so important considering how there is such a lack of public space in this area, and that was something that we added as well. The Council excluded zoning lots on the east side of 3rd Avenue between 46 and 51st Street from eligibility for the additional density in response to significant concerns about the impact to surrounding residential uses, specifically to the concerns that were raised by the Turtle Bay community, another example of where the Council was responsive to the local constituency about their concerns. In terms of the height and setback elements of the proposal. The Council is modifying the proposal to remove the grandfathering of non-complying daylight evaluation scores. The actual scores of the existing buildings are unknown, and allowing them to rebuild to a low score would not serve the goals of the sub-district. This was an item that many interested parties actually reached out to us, including folks in the architectural world who were concerned about the fact that these buildings were built at a time when folks did not focus on the daylight evaluation scores. This will ensure that new buildings, in fact, will be appropriate for this particular area. There are many additional modifications to the zoning text which were made to increase transparency and certainty, such as a referral of all applications to community boards and adding details to the list of transit improvements that will be generated by the bump in the FAR. The Council will be posting a list of our more detailed modifications on our website. With that, I would like to turn it over to Council Member Dan Goranik for remarks. Council Member. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for, uh, for describing the elements of the rezoning and our changes and for your support. Uh, and to my colleagues, I'm very pleased to be bringing the Greater East Midtown Rezoning Plan to this committee for a vote today. Uh, this is an important day for East Midtown, a city's most important business district, which delivers 10 percent of the city's property tax revenue, today is going to get a jolt, an opportunity for renewal. As you know, we stopped a prior version of this plan in the City Council back in 2013 because it delivered a lot of certainty to the real estate world, but far too little to the public. For a plan to work, we needed certainty all around, an opportunity for as-of-right development, and a solid commitment for public improvements. We then rolled up our sleeves and approved a new vision for Vanderbilt Avenue and focused on putting our density near our most important transit hub at Grand Central. We green-lighted the one Vanderbilt development, an additional 1.6 million square feet of Class A office space, with nearly six times the tax revenue that the predecessor buildings were bringing. It went from about $8 million to about $50 million in revenue for the city. We also delivered $220 million in private investment into Grand Central Terminal, which will, among other things, move trains faster through the station. We also approved a beautiful new public plaza on Vanderbilt Avenue between 42nd and 43rd Streets and a new transit hall for commuters. We then turned our attention back to the rest of East Midtown. Mayor de Blasio asked me and Borough President Gail Brewer to bring together the local stakeholders to develop a new plan. The East Midtown Steering Committee met 20 times over the course of a year engaged in many hours of intense discussion and produced a report that laid out a plan for this rezoning. The Department of City Planning then took that blueprint and turned it into this rezoning proposal. The formal proposal presented by the Department largely tracked the Steering Committee's recommendations. In short, the plan allows bigger development near subway stations all around East Midtown and allows for density to be earned by doing transit improvements. This is certainly the right place to be putting new density near Grand Central Terminal, one of our most important regional hubs. It permits landmarks in the area to transfer their air rights throughout the district rather than just next door or across the street. And it permits overbuilt buildings to rebuild their current floor area without having to retain 25 percent of their building as the current zoning requires. And for the public, we're going to see significant and certain benefits to the public realm. First, developments that are located in transit zones will be required to do certain improvements to the subway stations. The list of transit improvements is baked right into the zoning resolution, so they will get done as the buildings go up. This list includes things like new entrances, stair widenings, new elevators, and so on. The bigger the item, the more floor area that it can generate for a developer. And second, every air rights transfer from a landmark will be required to make a contribution into a public improvement fund, which will support the creation of new open public spaces in East Midtown. 
The contribution will be the greater of 20 percent of the sale price or a minimum contribution per square foot. So some of the changes that we're making today. We're creating a requirement for privately owned public spaces on the development sites. There were no POPs required in the original proposal. Under the Council's modifications, POPs will be required on all sites over 30,000 square feet. From 30,000 to 65,000 square feet, 10 percent of the site will be dedicated to POPs, and on lots over 65,000 square feet, the POPs will need to be over 10,000 square feet. We expect that about half of the new buildings that will come online will be required to provide these spaces, and they will be an important addition to the public realm in East Midtown. Also, after careful consideration, we are setting but lowering the minimum contribution to the public realm fund. In air rights transactions, 20 percent will be delivered to the public or a minimum contribution amount, whichever is higher. The original, proposed, the original proposal set a minimum contribution of $78.60. We were concerned about this methodology that, uh, that led to the number and worried that setting the minimum at too high a level could potentially chill transactions from happening in the first place. We refined the analysis focusing only on land sales, uh, which, had, which, had focused only, which had focused on land sales. We excluded Hudson Yards transactions from the calculations, and we arrived at a lower contribution number, namely $61.49. We believe that a minimum contribution at this level will provide certainty for the public but will not get in the way of the market. Regardless, the public will always get 20 percent if that is the higher value. We also gave some more authority to the non-mayoral members of the governing group who will decide how these funds are spent. We tightened the definitions of sites that qualify for the rezoning, putting an emphasis on those buildings with at least 75 feet of avenue frontage. We also are not grandfathering bad light and air scores on buildings that are coming down. Under the midtown height and setback requirements, each new building is required to achieve a certain minimum score that ensures that enough light and air reaches the street. The City's proposal allowed existing buildings with low scores to keep those low scores in a new building. We removed this grandfathering provision. After all, our goal is to improve East Midtown, not simply keep it as is. Finally, we heard a lot of concerns from the Turtle Bay community, including from Local Community Board 6, about commercial development on 3rd Avenue, putting an undue pressure on the residential areas just to the east. In response to those concerns, we're leaving the existing FAR on 3rd Avenue between 46th and 51st Street, but we're allowing existing buildings there to build back to their existing FAR if they qualify. The City has also agreed to commit funds today to activate a number of open space improvements. That means that we will pre be prepared even before workers from new buildings in East Midtown hit the streets, we will be able to have new open spaces for them. We're going to see some exciting new spaces, and we're going to see them soon, like, for example, 43rd Street between Lexington and 3rd Avenue, just to the east of Grand Central. That will become a shared street and allow for better access for pedestrians uh, and uh, more of a, an opportunity for people to sit out, enjoy their lunch, and relax. We also have a commitment of $50 million from the administration to deliver uh, on some of these commitments that we have set forth in the zoning resolution to get them activated even before the development starts. I want to thank the many people who have contributed to bringing this undertaking to fruition. Borough President Gail Brewer is a great friend and partner, and it was a pleasure co-chairing the steering committee with her, as well as coordinating closely throughout the Euler process. Each and every member of that steering committee took significant time from their day jobs to engage in the discussions that laid the groundwork for this plan. The ABLE team of city agencies, led by City Planning Chair Marisa Lago and her team, as well as her predecessor Carl Weisbrod, with important assists from the Department of Transportation and the MTA, they put in countless hours of hard work to convert the steering committee's blueprint into a formal proposal. Deputy Mayor Alicia Glenn came through with critical commitments that took this plan over the finish line, uh, and of course the City Council's land use team, um, Raju, Julie, Liz, uh, took uh, a lot of time to advise and amend the proposal, and I'm grateful to them, my Chief of Staff, Mariana Vademan Stone, and former Chief of Staff, uh, Genevieve Michael. I'm thrilled that this project is successfully coming to a close. I ask my colleagues uh, to support it today, uh, and I look forward to seeing the revitalized East Midtown uh, that it will create.
And with that, I thank you for the time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council Member. I also want to specifically thank our outstanding land use staff. If they're walking a little slowly today, it's because they haven't gotten much sleep in the last few days trying to meet today's uh, deadline. It was a great collaboration. Uh, with everyone involved, and certainly we're very grateful for all of their work. Today, we'll also be voting to approve two of the applications for revocable consents for unenclosed sidewalk cafes on our calendar. They are LU-713 Guacamole Taqueria, located at 5025 Broadway, and LU-714 Mama Sushi, located at 237 Dickman Street. These sidewalk cafes are in Councilmember Rodriguez, District of Manhattan, and he supports approval of these applications. Are there any members who have any questions or remarks on these applications? Hearing none, the chair asks the clerk to please call, a rose, uh, call the roll and to start Start with Councilmember Rodriguez, please. Got it. All right. I've been advised by Council that we have to give you some more gobbledygook before we can move on. We will now move on to a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittee to approve the modification I've described, LU 691 692, Greater East Midtown Rezoning, and to approve LU 713 and 714, the two sidewalk cafes. Will the clerk please call the roll and start with Council Member Rodriguez? Committee Clerk Matthew DeStefano, Committee on Land Use, roll call on LU numbers 691, 692, 713, and 714. Council Member Rodriguez. Aye. Thank you. Greenfield. Thank you. I vote aye and also ask if you can uh, call on Council Member Cohn, who also needs to leave. Cohn. I vote aye. Garodnik. Aye. Mealy. I vote aye, and congratulations, Doug. You sound like you're the star of the new university. I vote aye. Mendez. I vote aye, and congrats for all your hard work. Levin. Good job, Dan. I vote aye. Williams. Mr. Chair, you look uh, like you have weight off your shoulder. Anything you want to share? Anything new going on? I saved 15% of my car insurance this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Con congratulations, Councilmember Garodnik, on a great job, and I vote aye on all. Byron. I vote aye. Kalos. I vote aye. Reynoso. I vote aye on all. Congratulations to Councilmember Garodnik. And I think we're overlooking this taqueria is a big deal. So congratulations to Councilmember Idanis as well. Torres. Traeger. Can Councilman Garodnik repeat all the victories that uh, he secured for his district? I vote aye. And congratulations to my colleague. Salamanca. Uh, congratulations, Councilman Grodnik. I vote aye on all. My vote of 14 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. LU numbers 713 and 714 have been approved, and LU numbers 691 and 692 have been approved with modifications. Thank you. We're going to keep the roll open for five more minutes. Thanks very much.